الحمد لله واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له praise be to god and i bear witness there is no god but god he has no partners um assalamu alaykum everyone uh, there is one announcement um charity on sunday 2 p.m. god willing there will be sandwiches no pizza i don't know why but that's what sir i said um this sermon is recorded um <laughs> so sorry <laughs> okay um first of all like i before i start i want to just share like this like little experience like uh, i you know i have been going through and i have you know experiencing um some challenges and in, in, in regard to submitter submission right like as submitters we always try to reflect and figure out uh, how we become the utmost uh, you know submitters so I, i graduated back in may right 2021 and since then i have been like applying for jobs you know um, and i don't know like for some of you who knows like how like as a software engineer to go through jo- uh, job interviews uh, it could be like um what's the word would be uh i hope so you know uh it it's like challenging in a sense that it demoralizes you sometimes you know it's like really rough you know uh <coughs> it's like different stages is long anyways that's beyond the point um and i have been like very like vigilant about it many many reasons you know like um like you know i'm t- I'm, I'm 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 basically trying t- i I, fin- i graduated that was a milestone right and then the next step is to start my career right like and as a man uh i know like many men here they are very eager when it comes to like basically you know uh seeking a provision you know building your life you know um so i i've have been applying for like a lot of jobs i think i have like hit the probably around like 900 to 1000 mark like i have been applying since then like for 20 to 30 jobs a day a lot of rejections you know and these rejections like yeah it bother you a little bit you know you go, some of them they push they 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 send you like some like you know code challenges you have to do it uh so it's been like a really like you know roller coaster right last friday i got like it's i like i did my dawn prayer like and then around i just stayed up and then around like 8 a.m. Um, I get a call and I was like, oh, it's like probably uh, one of those recruiters who really never looked at my resume and he's just like, hey, uh, you're looking for a job. And then I start talking with the recruiter and then all what I find is like, oh, sorry, we're looking for a senior position or something. So I was like, it's morning. I don't want to answer it. I didn't answer it. And then the person uh, messaged me and he's like, hey, I'm a senior recruiter for like this company, one of these like big companies. and like we came across your uh, resume and I'm, i really like you know i really like you i really like your you know like your background everything and i was like wow this is great right uh, this is all good right now right so i was like yeah i text him back and i was like talking to him i was like yeah I, i'm sorry i missed your call can i call you back now and then i call him back and like i talk with the guy he's like yeah i'm from las gadas you live in las gadas because i have my address i put las gadas address nushas address for all these stuff uh, <laughs> 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 i mean if for any for, for for one reason it's like i i move i moved a lot i really moved a lot in the past two years <laughs> then like every time i change my mailing address if somebody want to mail me anything it always goes there Uh, uh, I can give you that address if you want. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> to, so long story short, hopefully it, it will be, um, it just goes well. Like the guy is just like, we are just talking about restaurants. Like, hey, when I come over to, you know, here, I should like, we should go out, have lunch. And I was like, this guy is like, this is weird. I have never experienced like a recruiter, like really uh, click in that way, right? Uh, I was like, and in my head, I'm like, yeah, this is it, right? Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, and, he's, and then like when we talked, he literally talked to me like this. He's like, hey, this is the first stage, what are you going to do? But here's the, th- I'm going to send you material to prepare for it. And I'm going to send you preparation for the next stage as well. So the guy is like already making a decision that just do well in the first stage. We are going to the next stage. And in my head, I was like, this is too good to be true, right? But it was true. The guy is a legitimate recruiter. 
Anyway, so on Sunday, I go, I was like, I had this, like, the first round, which was supposed to be an online code challenge. I have done many of those, you know. Some of them I do good. I pass all the questions that have been asked. Some of them I basically, you know, don't do so well. And that one, there were two questions. I, get, I, 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 I check the first one. Okay, that's fine. I, it looks something familiar to me. I nail it. I do well. I go to the next one, and there, where I had to show my true colors. <laughs> it was rough. It was a rough question. It was a really difficult question. Uh, time's running. I'm just literally in front of God and seeking refuge. Uh, God, please help me. I don't want to, like, you know, like, give power to anything, right? But my feelings are not reflecting what I was saying or to myself, right? Anyways, uh, I blew it up. Uh, <laughs> and then I, the th the, it's just like after that I was like uh, sorry I didn't know is that, is that a bad word no. oh okay okay uh, no I, I just just your reaction I didn't get it <laughs> um, um, so so like the the I I felt really really bad I never felt bad about like I've been doing a lot of interviews like. But that one made me feel bad. And the reason why I was like feeling really bad is because I was telling like in my head, my thoughts, like I was commenting God. I was like telling myself is that this is, like I don't need to feel bad about this. I don't need to give power to the person. I don't need to give power to the job. I don't need to give power all these, right? But like my feelings are not reflecting. My feelings like in my head, I'm like, like pissed. I'm feeling bad, right? And not able to control that. And it just was a moment of like shock to me. I was like, I'm not really like I'm not really like believing in God the the true way. I'm claiming that, but I'm not. And that like sorry the story took a little bit wrong and uh, long. Uh, but that like m like made me think like why I was so concerned. Like why I wouldn't be concerned about Omid struggling with his job, for example, in the same way. I may be concerned about him, but I wouldn't be like in the same way. I wouldn't feel like that tenacity in my feelings, right? And it just boils down to one thing. It was my ego. It was because I felt some kind of like disappointment and shame that I first did not do well. Second is like, okay, that person who is the recruiter, he's gonna see my result. He's just like, okay, that was a disappointment. There were a lot of things like unfolded as I was reflecting. And however I reflect on it, it always boils down to ego. Uh, and speaking of that, uh, first I wanna talk about like, so, so, you know, idol worship, we know, is the only unforgivable uh, sin, unforgivable, forgivable sin. And there are many ways uh, we would commit idol worship. There are many different idols that we can idolize. Uh, but like I said, I, I, as I'm talking like right now, I would like to basically cover one part, which is the ego, right? So let me start this verse first, right? Common form of idolatry. Common form of adultery. Adultery. The ego is a god. Have you noted the one whose god is his ego? Consequently, God sends him astray, despite his knowledge, seals his hearing and his mind, and places a veil on his eyes. Who then can guide him? After such a decision by God, would you not take heed? And I want to focus on this part of it says seals his earring and his mind and it places a veil on his eyes. Uh, later on, I will come back to that, but just keep that in mind. Um, so let me go on the ego and define the ego, right? This is like when you Google, this is the definition you get, right? A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance. Uh, and, and, and I also like want to uh, share the definition we learned from the messenger of the government and in light of the Quran, which is uh, arrogance augmented by ignorance. And there's no contradiction between the two definitions. It's just, I feel like the second definition, which is this one, is more focused, uh, and there is r more direct in a sense that in a, in a w when I was trying to reflect, this definition really helped me when I tried to basically uh, analyze it more. And Speaking to that, let me quickly just like go over these, right? Like each word, right? So to be an arrogance, right, is to show an attitude or to, to exp uh, express an attitude of 
superiority manifested in an overboarding manner, right? That feeling is that you are above everybody, you know? Or that feeling is that you know better than everybody, you know? Um, <coughs> don't confuse that with people misunderstanding you to that. These are two different things. Some people could look at you um, in a way and call you arrogance just because you are expressing some you know, thought or opinion that uh, challenge them. And we're gonna get to that as well. Augmented is make it bigger, right? So you have that self-esteem, that self-important, and what you do is just like your ego makes it like huge, like oh, you are even bigger than who you think, right, in a sense. And ignorance, which is really important in this sense, is the lack of knowledge, education, and awareness. And we're gonna go back, probably we're gonna cover that. Um, so basically, like, uh, when our actions are driven by our ego, right, uh, that will always be, uh, re like, that will always reflect in our attitudes, right, in, uh, in the way we see things, right, like this. Uh, <laughs> and also the way we define concepts, right? <laughs> really, some people think that. <laughs> <laughs> and also the way we define things and carry out our attitudes, right? So for example, instead of being concerned about something or topic, you're obsessed about it. And that obsession could lead you to making mistakes along the way. Second is, another way, is instead of being confident, right? And confidence does not mean, like if I'm confident when I'm talking to you, it does not mean I'm, like, I'm looking down on you. There is a way you carry out it, it's an attitude. You know, um, again, a lot of people confuse these two things. There are many, many like uh, 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 traits a person exhibit that could be, you know, it's like uh, the line is fine between uh, an action that's driven by ego versus uh, driven or coming from uh, a true self, an authentic self. Um, it's really hard for people like to be authentic in the way they express themselves. Um, so, so why, again, like why the ego, right? It's a common form of adultery, but also like why do we not to work on it? Why need to kill it? Because it's commandment, right? And I want to also like share this verse, right? Kill your ego, uh, 254. Recall that Moses said to his people, O oh my people, you have wronged your souls by worshiping the calf. You must repent to your creator. You shall cure your egos. This is better for you in the sight of your creator. He did redeem you. He is the redeemer most merciful. And the footnote is very important, right? It is the ego that led to Satan's fall. It is the ego that caused our exile to this world. And it is the ego that is keep most of us from redemption to God's kingdom. Most of us, and I wonder who's the messenger I was talking to here, the disbelievers or the believers. You can like, we can argue about this all day. To me, I'll take it to myself. Um, and it's very important to take it to yourself, right? Because like, the purpose here is to kill our ego. The purpose here is to um, redeem ourselves back. So do you want that ego you know, basically be um, the barrier between you and your salvation? I don't. Um, that being said, let me go to the next, I think another verse, yeah. Um, freedom of choice. Uh, we have offered the responsibility, freedom of choice, to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they refuse to bear it, and we... And, and we're afraid of it, and we're afraid of it. But the human being accepted it. He was transgressing, ignorant. The animals, the trees, the stars, etc., took advantage of this. Those are more intelligent than us in this regard, right? Uh, speaking of uh, ignorant, right? Like, and 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 the and the, and the, def and, and, the and the definition that we learn from the Sherpa sort of Covenant about the ego, right? Uh, arrogance augmented by Ignorance, right? Um, when we, when, when um, let me, sh like this is, we all know, right? How Satan basically claimed to be a God, right? But his claim was that he thought he could be a God, right? His ignorance was that not knowing 
God absolute authority. He did not value God the right way, right? He thought of God as like, uh, as like an equal to him in a sense, right? And that's a blasphemy. Um, so the idea is like you can be ignorant not it's in the way you think about things, right? In the way you analyze things, that's another way of ignorance, right? And any type of ignorance is gonna lead you to basically make misjudgment. And then you are not basing your judgment based on right information, you're basing your judgment based on your own feelings. In other ways, your ego really, it's like ego-driven decisions. Um, so, when do we show our ego? There are many innocent menstruation we show our egos. I'm gonna cover three um, quickly. I thought these are, you know, interesting ones. Um, first, we, show, we, we, we do show our ego when we fail. That was an example I was sharing about myself, right? I fell, and the first thing was trying to shield me, to protect me, was my ego. Um, from like basically being vulnerable to the experience, and basically learn from it and move on. Uh, in other ways, you submit cheerfully uh, because you have a trust in God. Um, the second one is when we are challenged, and that's a good one. That's relevant to all of us. Uh, when somebody challenges your opinion, when somebody disagree with you, how do you handle that? That's a good one. Um, the last one I want to share also, seeking recognition. Seeking recognition not necessarily like intent, like you would actively go and seek recognition. Sometimes seeking recognition is like when you are interacting with people, how do you want them to talk to you? If they say something to you, how do you handle that? If they say something to you that offensive to you, uh, how would you handle that? Are you going to wage war on them? Or are you going to like handle it gracefully without ego? Uh, because remember, every action we take, we are responsible for it, right? And, and this, what, what I mean by responsible for it, right, is like we are trying to kill our ego. We're trying to redeem ourselves, right? Um, I think I want to share this verse about like attributes of God. Say, our God, possessor of all sovereignty, you grant sovereignty to whomever you choose. You remove sovereignty from whomever you choose. You grant dignity to whomever, whomever you choose and commit to humiliation whomever you choose. In your hand all are all provision, uh, provisions. You are omnipotent. So the idea is like, right, is like if you are seeking sovereignty, if you're seeking dignity, if you're seeking anything, you're seeking respect from people, you're seeking like some, how people should like carry out themselves with you, how they would talk to you, all that, don't demand it. Ask God for it. Don't demand it from people. You cannot demand that, you know. That's one. Second, another way is like when you ask God for it, you also need to act upon that. You are believing that God is the one who grants you that, right? So how do you act upon that? You demand respect by being respectful. And that is, that's a trait of believers. That's a trait of righteous people. The way they talk with people, the way they carry out themselves, their attitude. They are not ego-driven creatures, right? Or human beings. Um, so that being said, I want to... Say, let's repent. Tubul Allah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Praise be to God, and I bear witness there is no God but God. He has no partners. Um, I hope the second one will be short. I hope so. There's some, a lot of stuff. Um, the second part, I'm just going to cover this. So how do you work on killing our ego, right? So I talked about our ego. We talked like how, in instance, how we show our ego, right? I want to also talk about maybe how we can kill our ego. And... Uh, I mean, the reason I also talked about, like, I, so when I experienced all that uh, experience, and I realized that it was my ego that kicking, I did a little research and tried to find like some information about like, you know, how to handle ego, blah, blah, blah. And I tried to put together all these, and I just summarized it in maybe at three points. Um, and I will go to the first one. 
So we can kill our ego by realizing that we are nothing in comparison to God Almighty, right? So no, the, so, so the idea is this, is like you need to have something to look up to and you know that that is bigger than you. You need to always know that you are nobody in comparison to the, uh, to, to, in our case as submitters to God Almighty, right? When, this, when you are aware, when you are cautious of that, uh, and I'm using the word realizing because the definition of the, of the word realizing is to be aware of something, is to understand a fact, right? So to be aware of something, it doesn't mean you just know it. We always, like I could ask you anything. I was like, hey, what's the meaning of this word, right? You probably have to pause and think it. But what I'm talking about is like our attitude, our actions. So how we can have that become part of our autopilot actions that we do. Uh, 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 I want me to give a good sermon about autopilot, right? So you need your autopilot to be positive. You need your autopilot to always be in a sense where you're always killing your ego, right? Um, so let me share. Let me share this verse. On that. Greatness of God. They can never fathom the greatness of God. The whole earth is within his fist on the day of resurrection. In fact... The universes are folded within his right hand. Be he glorified. He is much too high above needing any partners. The winner says, our universes with, it, with its billions of galaxies, a bil billion trillion stars, uncountable uh, disillusions of, <laughs> of heavenly bodies <laughs> spanning many billions of light of light years is the smallest and innermost of seven universes, right? And this part, this incomprehensible, incomprehensible vastness of the seven universes is within God's hand, right? Such is the greatness of God. And um, like to me, I realize also one thing is like, do I always reflect on that? You know, like sometimes we go on trips and like we see, I was like, I glorify God, right? But like, do I have to glorify God only when I'm on a trip? seeing big mountains and like experiencing unusual circumstance, you know? Because again, the idea is like, we need to kill our ego in every instance of our life, you know, in every moment. It needs to be your attitude. Your attitude needs to be driven by your own authentic self. And we all claim that we are submitters. We all claim we are believers. So show that. Don't like, let's try to not show that. I, that's what I was telling myself. I was like, I made the claim to be a believer and then I just get into this situation, and the first thing I show is me be feeling embarrassed or feeling shame or whatever that feeling I was experiencing by, you know, not doing well or failing, right? So to me, it was like I should have, like, if I claim my true self as a believer, I need to show that. And we have to work on that, right? So again, it's a, it's, and the reason why it's good to realize that God is your great, right? It's a sign of believer, right? Believers know God's qualities, right? And also knowing that, and like I said, being aware of that, uh, in every moment is our life must motivate us to do the right thing, right? And let me share another verse. Uh, they remember God while standing, sitting, and on their side, and they reflect upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. Our Lord, you did not create all this in vain. Be you glorified. Save, save us from the retribution of hell. And the footnote says, Your God is mover and whatever occupies your mind most of the time. The true believers are those who remember God most of the time, right? Um, so, like I said earlier, right? It's the idea is like every, in every moment, you, we, we need to be aware of God and who God is, you know? Like when you feel you are bigger than somebody, remember that God is bigger than you. Um, and the second one, realizing that we are not better than others. Rather, we are equal. And I think that's important. It's a way, just to clarify this, right? We learn from the Quran, you can have uh, many uh, verses when you search that a believer and disbeliever are not equal as far as belief is concerned. But what I'm talking about here is the way you look at people, you know? Do you like look down on people especially like in our congregation, uh, that, that's important. When we are out there, people you don't know, do you look down on them when you talk to them just because you'd be like, hey, I'm a submitter, you know, in your head, you'd be like, I'm a submitter, therefore this person doesn't know what, anything. No, you need to have a humility, the way you interact with them, the way you talk to them. Um, 
Payam is a good example when like, you know, giving the message, mashallah. Um, no, like he tried to not come across with people as like, I know it all, you know. He always tried to basically f figure it out and that's good attitude. Um, so I want to share this verse. For the sake of time, I think I'll just cover um, the part I thought I would like want to focus on. And I'll read the beginning though. Those among you who cannot afford to marry free believing women m may marry believing slave women. God knows best about your belief, and you are equal to one another as far as belief is concerned, right? Um, doesn't matter, like in this example, right, talking about uh, a, free, uh, a free man marrying a slave woman, right? Um, it doesn't matter whether, like, the man was rich and the woman was poor or vice versa. What matters is, is the belief, right? Um, and let me share another verse. You shall not treat the people with arrogance, nor shall you roam the earth proudly. God, no, God does not like the arrogance show offs, right? Um, so it's a commandment, right? Uh, to treat the people uh, humbly, you know, and to carry out your attitude with humility, right? Um, by the way, I just realized actually, uh, Shari are posted that. <laughs> A topic about the ego last night, and I was like, I hope that would not like stole my thunder. But <laughs> actually, I started reading it. I was like, actually, that really good topic, and it really helped me, you know, in, in, into like you know, understanding some ideas, you know. So thank you. <laughs> um, another person I want to share is like, walk humbly and lower your voice. The ugliest voice is the donkey's voice, right? Uh, similar, right? It's a, so we are commanded. We are commanded to be humble. We are commanded to be you know, uh, act with the humility, you know. And really, it starts with each other, right? Like, it's really important. Like, I mean, this is beautiful family, so. Um, so why this is good, realizing that we are not better than others, rather than equal? Again, like, you're not, be, because, because like, when it comes to opinions, that's a good one where it clicks, right? It's like you think your opinion is better than the others. So you are not, again, you are not concerned about other people's opinion. You are really obsessed with your own opinion and all that you need to bring, move across is your own opinion. Now, this is, I leave it to you. Sometimes people think their opinions are fact by what they believe is supported fact they have. And that's your responsibility. That's your responsibility to know that your facts are reliable facts. Um, I leave it there, but sometimes we get, our ego deceives us. You know, like I mentioned that article that Sharia shared, and if you give it a read, you realize that your ego could deceive you to believe something over another thing, and you think you know it, you think you saw it. You know, the example, I don't know if other people, there's an example of a guy, like, I saw the guy, he killed that guy, or whatever, right, some kind of scenario. He's like testifying against a guy who's gonna go to prison. And just because of the, the person's ego, they cannot basically claim that basically, I don't know if I saw the guy or not, you know? I'm just like prephrasing that example from the uh, article. Um, so like I said, right? And then we, like another, um, why this is good, like I said, right? It's like um, we are becoming receptive to reminders. So when we talk with each other, when we are having conversation, it's not about our opinion. Always look to the person who's talking and hear the person, what they are saying, because uh, it's good to hear reminders rather than like let your ego shield you against it and become defensive. Uh, I'll try to be quick, sorry. So the last one, realizing our mistakes, learning from them and sharing that with others. Okay, the last part, sharing that with others, I don't claim that as, uh, you know, what we are obligated religiously. But I will come to that, I, why I think that's good. However, we are obligated actually to know our mistakes and learn from them. And the idea of repentance and reformance, right? You repent for something you know. You made a mistake, you know what you did, you repent for it. To reform is to learn from that mistake and not do it again, right? Um, and I quickly shared this verse. Uh, yet, as regards those who fall and sin out of ignorance, 
then repent thereafter and reform your Lord after this is done. Is forgiver most, for, most merciful. And it's, it's amazing God's wisdom. How the verse mentions sin out of ignorance. Like I said, your ego could be, you could, you could act, you, you could, uh, your action could be ego driven because you are ignorant of some things, you know. Um, so, so yeah, so it's like, uh, it's, like I said, right, it's good to learn, learn. And I want to just quickly uh, go over why sharing with others is good. What I realize is like when I share with others, there are two things happen, right? First of all, it bring me closer to people. And that's always good, especially among us. You need to get close to our, your family member. Second, you are putting yourself out there. You are being vulnerable. And being vulnerable is also an act of humility. You are practicing the killing of the ego. You're practicing your humility. Some people don't feel comfortable doing that. But like I said, it's not a religious obligation. Um, but I try to practice that because I think it's good. At least with the people close to you, you don't need to share everything with everybody. Uh, okay, so that being said, so these are the three ones, right? How do we work on killing our ego, right? Realizing that we are nothing in comparison to God, knowing that there's always a, the Almighty God who's uh, bigger than us. Uh, realizing that we are not better than others, rather we are equal. The way you interact with people, you don't look down at people, you are, the way you talk with people, you understand, you listen to them, they are equal to you, your opinion, all that. Realizing our mistakes, learning from them, and sharing with that with others, right? So I thought these are really valuable three uh, points that help uh, me, at least if I, if I practice them, killing my ego. Uh, and to wrap this whole thing up, right? So we talked about the... Uh, uh, importance of killing our ego, right? Why it's important to kill our ego. We also defined ego in light of the Quran. And, and we talked about when do we show our ego, right? Remember the situations that I talked about, like I shared three situations, and also like, you know, that get our ego provoked, right? Remember those situations, try to identify them when you are in them. And uh, maybe figure out other situations where, you know, a person ego get provoked and keep that in mind. And last part also, I talked about like how we would kill our ego. I call it the triple R method. That's my method. <laughs> you can find your own method. Find a method to kill your ego. That's the most important part. Because our ego could basically stop you from uh, redemption and salvation. To this point, uh, let's pray. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm ad-deen. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الله اكبر سبحان ربي سبحان ربي سبحان ربي سمع الله لمن حمده الله اكبر سبحان ربي سبحان ربي الله اكبر الله اكبر Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm ad-deen. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een. Ahdina al-sarat al-mustaqeem. Sarat al-lazina an'amta alayhim. Ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim wal al-dhalleen. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله ولا شريك له السلام عليكم السلام عليكم